Good evening. Welcome to the latest Facebook Live from Snapple Travel. My name is Tanya. I'm the owner and founder of Snapple Travel. Tonight, I'm going to take you through Iceland virtually. I visited Iceland in June 2018. It was a fascinating destination and a place I've always wanted to visit. Iceland is also famous for its horses, a hardy breed developed from ponies taken to Iceland in the 9th and 10th century. The horse is also famous for its five gates. The walk, the trot, canter gallop, the tolt, and the flying pace. So I'll just um, put the slides on. Give me a moment. So what makes a small North Atlantic island so unique and fascinating? Did you know it's the land of the midnight sun? From mid-May to mid-August, the sun in Iceland rises from 3 a.m. and keeps on shining to just before midnight. When I stayed there, I opened the curtains probably middle of the night and the sun was, it was shining. Yeah, it was still quite light outside, so it's quite quite unique. And Reykjavik is both the northernmost and westernmost capital city in Europe. It houses most of the Icelandic population, 364,000 people. It's a small and colourful, quirky place with numerous restaurants, cafes and bars. And it's extremely walkable and a perfect destination to explore by foot. Another interesting fact, there's no mosquitoes in Iceland. Iceland's one of the two parts of the planet where mozzies have not set up shop, the other being Antarctica. It also is the best country in the world for gender equality by the World Economic Forum. 66% of the university graduates are women. 80% of the country's workforce are made up of women and they've also had numerous female prime ministers. Iceland's also a very eco-friendly country. Um, they make a lot of their own electricity, 85% of it naturally by geothermal power to heat all their homes. It's also the land of ice, fire and volcanoes. It's home to some of the most active volcanoes in the world. And from an energy point of view, that's how they make a lot of their electricity. Um, in 2010 and 2011, the volcanoes called chaos with, the, with air traffic, with over 100,000 flights being cancelled. Iceland also has one native animal, the Arctic fox, that came in the Ice Age. The horses didn't come until the 9th and 10th century. Also, all, all the houses and buildings are made from corrugated iron. Um, this, in 1920, the, a big fire came and also the Vikings um, eliminated a lot of the forests in Iceland. There's not many trees. They're only just starting to um, replant. So most of the houses are all made out of corrugated iron and the ones that aren't um, are obviously very, very old. There's no McDonald's or Starbucks, but you're not going to starve. You can still buy pizza and lots of other junk food, but the food is really good in Iceland. The Icelandic horses. Now, there's 364,000 population to 80,000 Icelandic horses. The Icelandic horse has the five gaze, five paces, as I mentioned before, the walk, trot, canter and gallop. Now the tolt, it's beautiful, smooth pace. It's like sitting on a couch and you just think, lean back and they just, just trot along very fast. Well, it's actually a walking pace, very fast. And then the flying pace can go up to 30 Ks. Um, that's more of a a very speedy trot. The horses, um, not all Icelandic horses have, can naturally um, tolt and do the flying pace. 
Um, the average height of a Icelandic horse is 13 to 14 hands. They're a sturdy breed and can easily carry someone over 100 kilos. They, um, they're they very easy to get on and off, um, especially if you're used to bigger horses. And these two, this is the um, lava fields. There's some rides in that quite close to Reykjavik. We can go out for a couple of hours and just have a nice ride. So the horse riding in Iceland, um, they offer the two hour rides, as I mentioned, on the volcanic lava fields and suitable for beginners to advanced riders and they supply boots and helmets. The longer rides are five to seven nights are more popular. You need to be an intermediate or advanced rider and the trails include wonderful scenery like the Golden Circle. The national parks, Northern Iceland, there's lots of beaches, beautiful scenery. The maximum group size is 16 riders and a herd of horses normally come along and you swap. So you might ride one horse for three hours and then you swap and you might ride four horses um, in a day. And the accommodation is at farmers' properties and it's normally shared rooms and facilities. Most properties offer a hot tub at the end of the day. So it's great to relax. All the meals are included in fresh lamb and fish. It's recommended to bring your own drinks. And I recommend when you're coming into the airport it, um, is to buy duty-free alcohol because alcohol is very, very expensive in Iceland. And here's a group of um, riders looking like they're just setting up for the day. And when you're riding, um, you go through a lot of rivers and streams, so and the horses are quite short, so I recommend bringing rubber boots. Um, you're not actually allowed to bring leather riding gear into Iceland because um, they've got strict quarantine rules. If you purchase a horse from Iceland, um, you're not ever allowed to bring it back into Iceland. They're not allowed to import any horses. So if any Icelandic horses go to any of the Icelandic horse championships in Europe, they're not allowed to come back to Iceland. Lots of uh, rides, waterways, amazing scenery, glaciers. Here's one of the typical farm properties, um, just relaxing. There's a group having a sing-along after dinner with a few drinks. And in Iceland, you'll see a lot of lupins. They're not native to Iceland. They're brought in from America to stop soil erosion. Um, and they're predominantly, they're all purple. They're everywhere. And the best time to see them is July and August. This was in June, so they were just coming out. So Reykjavik's the capital of Iceland. Um, on the left is the main church that's on the hill. You'll see it from everywhere. It um, took 41 years to build. It's quite an um, interesting um, building and it's meant to replicate the glaciers and the mountains and all the rocks in Iceland. The big grey building is the Parliament building um, that's in downtown Reykjavik. And below is a typical corrugated iron. Um, this is a restaurant cafe. Um, all the buildings are quite beautifully coloured. There's reds, there's greens, there's yellows, there's everything. Uh, this is one of the main glaciers um, in Iceland. There's over 269 glaciers. Um, I'm not very good, I'm sorry, at my Icelandic names. There's one called Vulcan Glacier. That um, the Game of Thrones was filmed there and also the James Bond movie, Die Another Day. So there's loads of glaciers to see in Iceland. And there's so many things to see. Um, whale watching, uh, there's puffins, 
can go um, loads of lagoons. This is the secret lagoon that you'd go on if you went on the Golden Circle ride, but you can also go there as a person. Um, in the winter, they've got the snowmobiles. Um, you've obviously got the Northern Lights, there's loads of activities. This is the Blue Lagoon. Um, this is, you can actually see the steam when you're coming from the airport um, to Reykjavik. This um, is caused by the ge geothermal power plant next door and the high silica content creates the blue color in the lagoon, but it's well worth a visit if you're going to Iceland. And in Iceland, there's many beautiful falls Waterfalls are just everywhere. And this one is in southern Iceland. And there's another one nearby called Segafoss Waterfalls, but that's a lot, a lot higher. A typical farm in Iceland. And this is a Golden Circle Geotherma carrier. Um, there's horse rides to this area too. You won't actually ride the horses, but you'll get to visit. Um, the Strock of, of Giza, that goes off every five to 10 minutes. And then the Golfos waterfalls, they're beautiful. I, when I was here, I've been to Victoria Falls in um, Zambia and Zimbabwe, and this was pretty much up there, very spectacular in the Golden Circle area. And it's only a couple of hours from Reykjavik. And down on the south coast, there's um, Bolsok sea st stacks there um, from erosion. And the beautiful Black Sand Beach. 1981, it was classified as one of the most beautiful um, non tropical beaches. Um, just with the, um, the, the rock formations in the, in the sea, just made it really spectacular. And it, the town um, nearby is called Vic. Um, it's a small town, but it has a really good shopping centre. And the Northern Lights, very amazing. Many tracks, many connected to Iceland for the Northern Lights. It's a spectacular destination. Um, the best time to see it is September to March. Um, obviously, not guaranteed, it's always weather dependent. If the if sky is not clear, obviously you're not gonna see the lights. They also have some riding, shorter riding holidays if you're interested in doing that as well, or you can just rug up and stay and um, go out and visit the Northern Lights. So if you're looking to um, go to Iceland and want to know more, whether for horse riding holiday or just a holiday, give us a call, um, we can help with all your travel arrangements. Obviously we can't travel right now, but we can also dream. Um, thank you for listening tonight. Next Wednesday, I'm going to be talking about Portugal and a similar talk about the destination and also what's on offer with the horse riding. I look forward to speaking to you then. Have a great week.